how's it going everybody it is i visual i hope you guys are having a beautiful day and welcome back to another pokemon ultra sun and moon wi-fi battle versus daniel over here in the oh you tier so i'm just gonna lead off with my water game z keldeo with hydro pump secret sword calm mind and taunt as leads off with landris looking at his team it does some work so that's why i wanted to lead off with it as uh, he just switches into the Tapu Bulu. Does not want to take a maybe potential Scald, but maybe I can get a burn on it if I did have Scald. Unfortunately though, I did not. So, get a nice Hydro Pump off on the Tapu Bulu, as it does absolutely nothing. Uh, you know, who can you expect from a Tapu Bulu? Probably a Soul Vested. And I'm just gonna switch out into my Ferrothorn as he throws off a Nature's Madness. And that kind of sucks. Since I don't have leftovers, so I don't really gain much except for grassy terrain. I am going to be Choppa Berry, which could come in handy for maybe a superpower or potentially a focus blast from his Alakazam in the back. Mega Alakazam, if that's. Probably. So, he goes into Cell Seal as I get a spike up, and now I'm just going to bring in my Lander's T to get some of my Stealth Rocks up. So, uh, the hazards are going on the field, and it's go time. I'm going to get in my Zera Aura or Mega Glalie potentially and just go ham honestly looking at his team he doesn't have much switchings uh he does throw off the flamethrower though maybe catching my um ferrothorn uh but i'm not gonna stay in and take that since you know cell steel is always packed that but sometimes you know ferrothorn might want to try and get a leaf seed off on cell steel or thunder wave or knock it off something like that just like kind of predicting them to predict them to uh stay in or switch out and go for leaf seed or heavy slam but yeah, I don't want a U-turn right there because he could just easily protect. I just go hard in zero, or as he actually switches into Lander's T, which I didn't expect. And it is leftovers, so I know that is not going to be a choice scarf Lander's T, that's for sure. I do not want to stay in since he most likely will live a Hidden Power Ice, as I could just go into my Lander's T on the maybe Stealth Rocks, Defog, or Earthquake, as he just throws off the Earthquake right there. Gets back to max HP, which kind of sucks. I actually don't have HP Ice on this Lander's T. I have Hidden Power Fire. Uh, and I just go for the U-turn because, I mean, maybe it's risking him going for a Hidden Power Ice, but I know he's really, really slow now. So, he probably is going to go for Stealth Rocks or Hidden Power Ice right now, so I'm just going to go into my Glalie, Mega Glalie, and it is Naughty Nature, so it's plus attack. Um, and this thing is going to hurt something on his team as I can get a nice Glaciate boosted uh, frustration off as he switches into Celesteela, which is going to take neutral damage. And if Celesteela isn't going to be defensive, it is not going to take this well. But it does turn out to be defensive. So, unfortunately, that frustration is not going to be a 2 at KO after some leftovers. So I'm going to switch out. I don't want to take a Heavy Slam or a Flamethrower. Uh, I'm just going to go in my Zera Aura since I can take both of those. And Zera Aura can threaten out the Celesteela as well. As Zera Aura is going to be Life Orb, and it is... Uh, pack and fire punch and I'm just gonna go for that right here as he does not have a good switch into this because when he brings in Needle King he's gonna take all that hazard damage and he's gonna get two KO'd by fire punch which is very very nice and he should not be choice scarf Needle King if that even outspeeds max speed zero or he should just be life warp or I've seen some focus sashers but that's not gonna work when I have hazards up so yeah just gonna knock that Needle King out also fire punch catches a top of Bulu after uh, stealth rock and spikes I think it too it kills it as well so that's really really nice so brings in the landers I just go for it in price I was like you know what I'm just gonna go for it and see if I can knock it out unfortunately I do not as he lives on like a slither of HP and he gets stealth rocks up which is amazing for me because he did an earthquake and uh, I get to keep my zero or for later as I just go for a Fire Punch, just an off chance. He wants to switch out into something like Top Bulu or Cell Steel. I think Fire Punch will do more. Or even Alakazam. Uh, since even though I did get minus one attack, I still have more EVs in attack and stuff like that. And it's just super effective to uh, Cell Steel. So yeah, it brings in Alakazam. I go into my Ferrothorn. As Ferrothorn should be able to hopefully eat a Focus Blast after the Chopper Berry. But uh, he just goes for a Psychic. I mean, to be expected since Psychic hits there or... And I don't think I live Focus Blast from this range, even with Chapel Berry. But unfortunately, he misses that Focus Blast right there. And I get a Thunder Wave off. So that is huge, because now Alakazam is going to be slower than pretty much most of my Pokemon on my team. Mega Glalie, probably. Uh, Zera Aura, for sure. So my man misses the Focus Blast, and I get a Leech Seed off as well. And he gets paralyzed on top of that. And I'm just sitting here like, alright, I feel bad now. I'm probably just going to let him try and knock out Ferrothorn, 
uh, and also show him that I do have Chapel Berry. Uh, you know, might as well activate it because he does have Hoopa Unbound in the back. Maybe he has like Drain Punch or something, and uh, it might not be able to knock out Ferret Thorn. So might as well pop that Chopper Berry for him. But he's just not breaking through the Paralyze at all and missing the Focus Blast if he does break through the Paralyze. So yeah, Pokemon's a fun game. <laughs> uh, if you ever wanted to play competitive Pokemon, this is the reason why you shouldn't. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But uh, it's fun still. But you got to just realize this is just part of the game. And sometimes it happens, even how frustrating it is and how it can be. It's what makes the game, I guess, fun for the opponent <laughs> that is getting all the hacks, uh, even though I'd rather be a much closer game. So, I mean, Alakazam really did a lot of work versus my team, honestly. Uh, like, every time Alakazam came in, it kind of got a kill. Uh, since my Ferrothorn was lowered to the point where it would probably get knocked out. Even though, I was pretty sure that I can win this game. Since, uh, you know, Megaleli is still pretty healthy. Even though he did get Stealth Rocks up, which is kind of bad. Uh, but finally, I switched out my landers because he actually did hit the Focus Blast on my Ferrothorn. And I was like, you know what, I'm just going to keep my Ferrothorn as a sack or something like that. And I'm uh, just going to Landris. And I'm pretty sure he'll just go for another Focus Blast, which I should take. And he'll get knocked out by the Leech Seed. So, I mean, I don't want to just sack a Pokemon. I might as well just, like, you know, keep my Pokemon for later, if possible. Uh, as he goes into Hoop Unbound, try and go for a U turn on it. But he just knocks me out with the Hyperspace Fury, to be expected, since Hyperspace Fury is. Probably, you know, Hoop Unbound's probably banded with that, I would guess. Maybe Z-Move. And also, I did have Excadrill, which is Choice Scarf in the back, which I'm pretty sure at this point of the game, like, even if uh, he knocked out my Ferrothorn and I didn't get the Thunder Wave off, it will just, like, literally Iron Head or Earthquake and just demolish his team, uh, since Scarf Excadrill just looks amazing. Uh, so over here, I pulled a double. Even though I, he does have Cell Steel still, um, I would have to catch that on a switcher or something, and every time I bring Zera or in or Mega Galilee, like I did right now on the double from his Hoopa Unbound, which is very risky, by the way, but I felt like he would really want to go into Celesteel. Like, it's just, he, it's a given. Like, he probably expects me to go for, like, a wrap spin with Extra Drill or something like that. So, since Zera or is in, he switches that into the uh, top of Bula as he went for Protect, uh, as he saw I went for Plasma Fist, but now I switch it up on him. I go for the Fire Punch, expecting him to probably want to switch into top of Bula. And this Fire Punch should be able to do it KO the top of Bula. And I get an unfortunate burn, which I don't think matters since he's going to be slower than me. And uh, he should still get knocked out by a Fire Punch, no matter what. So, I mean, 10% <laughs> chance to burn. That's pretty funny, but I mean, it didn't really matter since um, it knocked it out either way. So, luckily the grass train helps me over here since I don't get knocked out by my own life orb. Uh, as I am able to go for a Plasma Fist on the Celesteela, knock it out, and Hoop Unbound should be able to get one shot by a Plasma Fist since Hoop Unbound has horrible defense. Unless it's Scarf, I think? Uh, but he's probably made it. And if he'll Scarf, I don't know, Zeraor is really, really fast. I don't know if Scarf Hoop Unbound can outspeed to Zeraor. Maybe. But I don't know. Uh, yeah, Hoop Unbound is just going to get demolished. Zeraor went in on this game. Positioned it very well versus his team, as um, it would have been a lot closer game for sure if he didn't miss those Focus Blasts, 70% chance to knock out a Pokemon, and if I didn't Thunder Wave him as well. Um, what would have happened was, like, say he knocked out Fear Thorn, I'd go into Excadrill, try and get an Iron Head off or an Earthquake, he switches into Celesteela, maybe I would predict him to want to switch out in Celesteela. Uh, I would probably see if he wants to think that I'm not Choice Scarf first, he goes into Celesteela, and then maybe I'll bring in... Uh, I'll put another Pokemon to sack, like Landorus or something, I don't know. Since Landorus, I sacked it um, to like Alakazam's Focus Blast and the Hoop Unbound. It, didn't, it wasn't really doing too, too much anymore since I already got the hatches up. But yeah, um, GG to Daniel. That's just the game we play, I said. So next up we have versus Demzer over here. And Demzer has Dragonite. Probably Zemo Dragonite, I'm guessing. And then like T-Spikes, Toxpex, Tapu Koko could be uh, maybe Specs, Life Orb, who knows. Heatran probably rocks, Landers probably has Choice Scarf, and Tangrowth maybe a Soul Vest, we'll see. So, yeah. Um, Mega Glalie looks amazing versus this team. Absolutely amazing. So I just lead off with it. As uh, he leads off with a Heatran, and Earthquake will blow this thing back. As long as it's not Air Balloon or Chocobar. As uh, he probably sees that coming, because he just hard switches out into Landers T, expecting an Earthquake. So good play on Demzer's parts. As um, he lowers my attack as well with an Intimidate, which kind of sucks. But... I should be able to still knock out the Landris T with a uh, frustration. And uh, maybe he's scared of that. Maybe he's a bulky Landris T, so he just hard switches out into Tangrowth. And Tangrowth does get to be killed by this frustration at minus one attack. 
Because maybe Galele got that plus attack nature. He was probably expecting me to be like, uh, maybe plus speed nature, but I'm plus attack nature. So, he switches right back into Landris T, gets another Intimidate, but boy, this is fourth times weak. So, he does not take that well at all. Unfortunately, he does live on a Slither. And let's go for another Frustration, because since I saw the Leftovers, and I'm pretty sure he's dang bulky, like max HP, max defense, maybe, saw the Calcs. Um, I knew I'd be faster. He could have been max speed, but I would know because he probably would have been not one-shotted by that minus two frustration. So he brings in Tapu Koko. I have a pretty good switch, which is Ferrothorn, unless he's hitting by our fire. Also, I know he's going to be timid Tapu Koko since um, he's shiny, and only shiny Tapu Kokos are timid. So uh, Ferrothorn seems to be a be the best bet versus the Tapu Koko, as long as he doesn't have hidden by our fire. So... Um, I got some spikes up now as he goes into Tox Specs. Tox Specs could get some Toxic Spikes up, uh, but I do have Exile Drill with Rap Spin, and I can just easily go for that. As now I want to go into Landris and get my Stealth Rocks up, break that multi scale from Dragonite, which will be really, really crucial. Uh, maybe one-shotting it with a Hidden Power Ice with Zero Aura, maybe Glalie's Ice Shard, some stuff like that. So uh, he actually switches out, I guess fearing the Earthquake right there. Goes into Tangrowth, as Tangrowth will easily eat up an Earthquake. If I was Volume Z, though, ooh, smack that Tangrowth right in its face. But, uh, hey, I'm just defensive leftovers, so just gonna go for a U turn, get some nice damage up on the Tangrowth, a little bit of chip, as, uh, you know, he keeps regening all his health back with uh, his ability regenerator. And uh, he just throws off a knockoff, so get some nice Iron Bob right there, as unfortunately he knocks off my Chopper Berry. But that's totally fine, since I didn't think I would really, really need it this game, since he probably has, like, Fire Punch and Dragon A or. You know, fire move on Heatran. As I just throw off a Thunder Wave right there, since I'm pretty sure he's not going to stay in, as I could easily knock off his item with Tangro. And if I do have knock off, he does not want that to happen, because he might want to keep his Assault Vest. Uh, maybe. We'll see. Uh, but yeah, getting Thunder Wave off on a Heatran is amazing, because now I have a chance to paralyze it, and it's slower than pretty much everything on my team, I would say. Maybe even slower than Ferrothorn. Probably not. It depends on his speed, I guess. If he's, like, especially defensive or. Offensive train as he just throws off the Magstorm as they go into Keldeo and man Keldeo takes over half of his HP as it just switched it in Toxic stealth rocks. I think you guys rocks up uh, and then Magstorm and then you know the residual turn of Magstorm's damage as You know, I can't switch out unfortunately I would have probably switched out predicting Tox specs because the easy switch into Keldeo, but Magstorm traps you so uh, He gets a free switch into whatever he wants so I just go for a taunt. I mean, I knew Secret Sword or Z Hydrobone would do nothing to Toxpex, so might as well go for a taunt. As um, I just go to Ferrothorn on Toxpex, and I can pretty much freely go for another Spike. I was thinking about going for a Leech Seed right there, but I was like, I feel like I really want Spikes up, just weaken everything on his team. Um, and then maybe I'll go for some Leech Seeds, because I want to punish his Regenerators as much as possible, where that they will not be able to switch in on my Zero or, or my Mega Galilee at all. Uh, so yeah, now I go to my Keldeo, pretty much as a sack, I don't need it anymore, since he has a Tox Specs, yeah, okay, now he gets the Stealth Rocks up, um, I thought he w had it up there before, but he didn't, he just had some T-Spikes up, so, yeah, Keldeo, now I'm gonna switch out, because I expect the, uh, Tox Specs to want to come in, uh, really risky play, because he could easily just maybe predict me to, or maybe just expect Keldeo to stay in, um, or predict me to switch out, I don't know. Since, you know, Toxpex is really easy switching on a Keldeo. Uh, but luckily he did not, and I can get a free Rap Spin off. Get rid of those rocks, get rid of those T-Spikes, and allow Mega Glalie or Zera Ore to come in without getting poisoned. As he just throws off the Scald, and unfortunately burns me. 30% chance, you know, it's a given. Uh, and does over half as well, which is uh, very scary. But now I can just hard switch into Mega Glalie, as I want to show off some Mega Glalie action. And I don't want to go to Zera Ore, since... Uh, I don't know, I just want to show off more Mega Glalie. I mean, Zero Aura could come out over here, but, uh, I don't know. Like I said, I just wanted to go for some kills of Mega Glalie, since you don't see it too much. So I do have Freeze Dry on Mega Glalie, but it's more so used on Pokemon that are, you know, I guess, uh, maybe Gyarados, Pelipper, stuff that will take more damage to it, since Toxpex, uh, since I am running Max Attack, uh, it will take more damage from Earthquake either way. And plus, Toxpex has the same defense and special defense, so you couldn't really tell if it would be either or. So it's just better to go for Earthquake, since uh, even though Stab Freeze Dry, we're more invested in attack. So yeah, Knockout Tox Pex right there as he goes and attack Coco. So Keldeo looks pretty nice, maybe he can claim a life right here. As uh, I just go into Extra Jewel on the top of Coco, and uh, Top Coco can't really touch Extra Jewel really. Unless they have like maybe Ferium Z can do a nice chunk, uh, or Hidden Power Fire. Uh, but he just goes for the Electrium Z, and that Extra Jewel does not 
care about that since I'm new to that, so that's really, really nice. And uh, he just gets the heck out of there, so that's good to know Top Goku Zemu since now I'm pretty sure maybe Dragonite might be like mold, uh, weakness policy. So I'm pretty scared about that. But I go for another Rapspin, get rid of that uh, T Spike he laid up. He goes into Tangrowth, uh, as Tangrowth can easily just wall Excadrill. Unless I have like, I don't know, Swords and Stelium Z or Toxic, but he should know I'm gonna be Scarfed. As now I go into Me Mega Glalie, unfortunately gets a crit right there, but does not really matter, as Mega Glalie should be able to destroy something. As, uh, yeah, Tangrowth goes down, so he just sacks that and brings in a Top Goggle. Takes some more hazard damage with that Spikes and Stealth Rock, and potentially putting it in range of an Ice Shard, but. For now, I'm gonna switch out because I don't think I can. And just go to my Landers T. As uh, I'm expecting to probably just want to go for an electric move. He can go for an H Guys or Dazzling Gleam. Uh, but Landers T should be able to take at least one of those. Since I know he's D move, he's not gonna be like Life Orb or Specs. And uh, he just throws off the Hidden Power right there. Able to knock me out from that range, which I expected. Didn't really need Landers T as much anymore since I wasn't Hidden Power Ice. It couldn't really do much to Dragonite, so. I just wanted to bring in my Zera Aura, outspeed Top Goku, go for Fire Punch, and knock it out. And now Zera Aura is in, and Zera Aura is now ready to claim some lives. So, brings in Heatran, just gonna knock that guy out with a close combat, easy kill. And then the last mod is gonna be Dragonite, and Dragonite will hopefully go down to a Hidden Power Ice. As that's four times weak to it, I got my rocks up, break that multi-scale, and everything should be, you know, good and dandy. Uh, hopefully Dragonite will get knocked out, so... Uh, just go for the Hidden Power Ice, and Dragonite does get one shot. It's so pretty, pretty nice. Sometimes you would see Zera Auric has some investment in special attack, uh, just to ensure uh, a better kill ratio on Landers T's. Uh, since Landers T, I think you will need a lot, like maybe around 80% chip from the Zera Aura, I would say, if they're max HP, maybe a little bit of a special defense sometimes. Uh, bulky Landers T might be able to live. Hidden Power Ice is from like barely invested EVs in the special attack. But luckily, uh, switched in on Stealth Rocks a lot, and uh, Dragon will easily go down after Rocks. So next up, we got versus Zack over here. He got some Aurora Veil happening as uh, Sticky Webs as well with Rubombi. So that's gonna be annoying. Maybe Spikes uh, stacking one for Ninja, and then the three hard hitters: Mega Mawile, Dragonite, and Mimikyu. So I'm thinking the Z move might be uh, Dragonite, probably Life Orb, Mimikyu, and then you know what Mega Mawile does: just clicks player off. Maybe uh, Focus Punch, Ice Punch, Fire Fang, Thunder Punch, Zora's Dance, Sucker Punch, Knock Off. You know the drill. You know it. So yeah, uh, just lead off Extra Drill as uh, leads off pretty well versus his leads. And uh, leads for Bombi, and I just go for an Iron Head, and I get an unfortunate flinch on him. So I'm guessing Mold Breaker breaks Shield Dust, because Shield Dust ignores um, secondary effects of moves. And since I have Mold Breaker, I guess I break that ability so that the Iron Head can flinch. So that's awesome for me, I guess. Um, since, you know, Rabombi can stop it from a fake out flinch from Megalovany. So that's pretty cool. Mold Breaker breaking things. As uh, he just goes into Mawile, and the Iron Head does a ton. As now I'm going to Lander's T, since Lander's T gets Intimidate off. And uh, he was Intimidate Mawile. So that's why he didn't take too much from Iron Head. As he goes for the Swords Dance right there. But I for sure want to get my Stealth Rocks up versus this team. Potentially break any Focus Sashers, maybe break down Multi Scale Dragonite, weaken the little Nine Tails. It's just all around good. As he just goes for a Sucker Punch, predicting me to attack him. But now he goes for another Sucker Punch, I guess. Trying to chip away at Landers Steep. But since I'm a defensive monster, I just knock him out with that Earthquake right there. And yeah, plus two Mawile barely did anything. So actually brings in a Rabong right there. Not too sure. He could have kept that as a sack. Maybe he just forgot about Stealth Rocks. I don't know. Uh, he probably wasn't going to pay attention right there. But he could have like kept that as a sack. Always keep your sacks, um, you know, if you need to switch into another Pokemon. Don't just send out your Pokemon that dies to rocks willy-nilly, because that could uh, potentially help you or save you a game. So, um, now bringing Ferrothorn on the Alola Ninetales, as Alola Ninetales can't really do too much to Ferrothorn. The best thing you can do is really just like maybe hypnosis me as he does go for it. So getting the Roarville up kind of does suck. So now Hidden Part Ice or maybe my Ice Shard. Uh, won't knock out Dragonite if he does Dragonite's up, which is scary. Uh, but hopefully I can still pull through. So putting Ferrothorn to sleep kind of does suck because now I can't get a Thunder Wave off on the Dragonite. But um, yeah, I'm just trying to you know wake up over here as he brings in Dragonite. So um, I do switch out over here because I don't want to take a Fire Punch. Ferrothorn could be really nice for potentially taking on Greninja if he isn't in the Power of Fire and potentially taking on the Little Nine Tails. As I just go into hard uh, Mega Glalie and Mega Glalie will hopefully. Um, do something with Ice Shard and put it in range 
of maybe Scarf Exegil. As um, if he goes for another Dragon Dance, and if he is going to be weakness policy, this could be really, really bad. Because if he has extreme speed, he can do some big boy damage. Um, as he just throws off the Earthquake, and luckily I do live that. But Hail is still up, but Hail st oh, stops right there, so I guess it doesn't matter. Um, and he does have the extreme speed right there. So I'm guessing his last move is going to be Fly with Flying Z, so he doesn't have Fire Punch. So um, the Earthquake could be dangerous versus Ferrothorn as it's asleep still. But luckily uh, he didn't go for another Dragon Dance, and he's not weak to Poly either way. So my fears just like flew out the door. Uh, as I could just outspeed him, my choice Scarf X drill and uh, Revenge kill him and knock him out. So uh, I'm guessing, you know, that was probably his move. Uh, but I was really scared of weakness policy. So gonna switch into Keldeo on the Greninja as he is pro team. So that's what I was expecting on a Veil team. Most likely they have like spikes, maybe T spikes. Uh, you know, they could have a variety of things with pro team Greninja. Uh, maybe Taunt as well, Shadow Sneak. Uh, but he throws out the Hydro Pump, so Keldeo takes that. I was really scared of Extra Sensory as well, but uh, luckily he didn't have that. So now I just throw off the Wadim Z since on his team he doesn't really have anything to take it. And um, I don't want to miss Hydro Pump as I expect probably Mimikyu to want to come out. And if I miss the Hydro Pump, that would be kind of sucky. So uh, I'd rather not miss and break the Mimikyu's disguise. Because um, if I start Swords Dancing up, that could be really, really bad. As uh, Shadow Sneak plus Shadow Claw could do some more work. He doesn't even need to maybe even go for Play Rough. So I'm going to switch on to Lander C, so get the Intimidate off as he actually switches out the Mimikyu into Ninetales. So very good play on his part. Going to want to get the uh, Aurora Veil back up and uh, save him from taking massive damage and, you know, help him with his sweeps. So uh, over here I make a risky play, just go for the U-turn as I most likely expect him to want to go for Aurora Veil. Now I could have probably just hard switched, but there's no chance maybe like hard switched as well on anything really. Uh, even though I probably should have just hard switched. I don't know, I was really scared of it. Maybe I was like, kind of hoping like as a sack as well from Freeze Dry and stop it from freezing one of my Pokemon. Because I didn't really need, need Landorus anymore, even though it would be nice for the Mimikyu and Intimidate it. Um, I felt like X-Drill had it in the bag, to be honest. Uh, so I go on X-Drill on the U-turn, knock out that Ninetales as four times weak from Iron Head, so Aurora Veil's not going to save you, buddy. As uh, brings in Greninja, and Greninja can take an Iron Head with the Aurora Veil up, so I'm just going to go into Ferrothorn. Hopefully he doesn't have Hidden Power Fire. Because then that will destroy my Ferrothorn. Um, but I don't see Life Orb on the Greninja, so I'm most expect mostly expecting it to be Focus Sash. Uh, usually that's what they are on Veil teams. I'm surprised they didn't really get some spikes up, though. I would have tried that at least, but maybe he was scared of extra just rat spinning them. But he does have Mimikyu to spin block, so... Um, luckily, I do wake up right there, knock out the Greninja with the Power Whip, and down it goes. No missing, and uh, yeah, pretty nice for me. Greninja does not knock me out with another Hydro Pump. Um, so yeah, brings in the Mimikyu over here. It's going to want to try and weaken it with a Power Whip, but unfortunately, it misses. So, plus the Mimikyu is kind of scary, because if he goes for another Swords Dance, it could be kind of bad. So I'm just going to go into Landorus, get that Intimidate off, and plus three Mimikyu um, should not be able to knock out like Zero or from full, since my Zero or is still from at full. Uh, but he just goes for the Shadow Claw, and he turns out to be Life Orb. So pretty good for me, as uh, he didn't go for another Swords Dance, and he's only at plus one attack. So goes for the Shadow Sneak right there. Uh, I guess pretty confident it will knock me out. I mean, I was pretty confident that he was faster than me. And he could tell from the damage rolls that I was a defensive laner's team. But, yeah. Going to Zero or I'll speed the Mimikyu. And he just goes for Shadow Sneak to, I guess, try and knock me out. But it's not going to be able to. And I can just go for the Plasma Fist and knock out that Mimikyu. And, man, Zero or just, like, claiming lives every single game. Uh, just doing work. I love Zero or Maybe he'll drop down to UU. That could be really fun in the UU tier. Might be not fun because it might be too strong. I don't know. We'll see. Because uh, I don't see it too much in OU anymore. Like, I only seen Zero Aura used when it just, uh, I guess, was released. But, yeah. Uh, last game we got versus Demzer again. But he brought a different team, as I forgot that I used his team against him again. So, might as well show it, since it's a really, really good game. Uh, really, really close. And it's a long one. So, buckle your seatbelts and grab some popcorn. I don't know. As uh, Demzer brought some Aurora Veil this time with Charizard, and you know what that means. Charizard is probably going to be X with Aurora Veil. Unless it's Charizard Y Belly Drum, the heat set that I brought. Or it could be Flame Charge, which is also dangerous. Charizard Y with Flame Charge, whew, if you run into that, you better hope you have something for that, because it's about to outspeed everything and cook you. With Solar Beam, maybe Fire Blast, and potentially, I don't know, what else do they run? Uh, I don't know, Earthquake? Focus Blast, I guess, for Tarantar? Probably. 
and he tramp. But yeah, anyways, I'll lead off of Landers as he leads off a of little nine tails, and I do not want to take a freeze draft, so I'm gonna switch out into my Ferrothorn as he hard switches into the Landers right there. So maybe expect me to be like Scarf Stone Edge or something like that, just to scout. As uh, yeah, I don't want to take freeze drive like I said, and this allows me to get a free leech seed off. As uh, you know, covers him staying in, going for an earthquake, maybe get some rocks up. That's what I was expecting him to do, but he hard switched and no U-turn as well. So that's some crucial information right there. Uh, maybe he just didn't want to take Iron Parb's damage. That could be a reasonable, um, you know, reason I guess to not go for U-turn. But it also believes maybe he's not choice scarf Landers because whenever I see Landers on a Veil team, I think it's going to be Folk Sash Explosion with Swords Dance and Stealth Rocks, but. Not too sure with Heatran over here, uh, since Heatran with leftovers probably is the rocker as well. As over here I made a really risky play, I expect him to expect me to switch out. Um, which I, I battled Demzer before, so I know he's a very good player. So that's why I made that play. I wanted to go for the Thunder Wave, predicting him to predict me to switch out on Keldeo, since Keldeo can easily switch on the Magnastorm. So he could have went for the Magnastorm on the Ferrothorn, but like I said, predictions, predictions. So yeah, now I switch into Keldeo as I'm pretty sure... Um, he wants to go for the Magstorm, just get rid of my Ferrothorn, but yeah, that's not going to happen. Uh, Ferrothorn is very, very nice for his team, as I can potentially uh, get some Iron Barb's damage on Charizard X, maybe get a Thunder Weave off, allow him to not just freely Dragon Dance up on my Ferrothorn, so yeah. Unfortunately, he does have a very good switch into Keldeo, which is Tangrowth, and man, Keldeo, remember when it was so good back in Gen 6? It's like, there's a switch in for everything in Gen 7 now. We got Tangrowth, Toxpecs, and just Keldeo's emo is not doing much anymore, so... Yeah, unfortunate. Uh, but it does do work against some type of teams with taunt. Like some. But not too much. But yeah, anyways, I bring in Galilee over here. As Galilee could easily um, switch in on Tangrowth, unless he's in Power Fire, but it seems to be just Hidden Power Ice, which makes sense to get rid of Zygarde and stuff and Landers Tease. If the Landers Tease is not Z move, and if Zygarde is not Z move, dra uh, Outrage, Dragonium Z. But yeah, just go for the Frustration, get some nice damage up on Nine Tails. Don't want to go for an Earthquake, just an off chance. He wants to bring in, I don't know, Landers T on some Wax stuff, or maybe Charizard. As he gets to Veil up, I just go for a Quake, get some more Chip on Nine Tails, and my pretty much best play is to waste Veil and try and knock out Nine Tails with Mega Lele, as he might miss some Hypnosis here and there. But unfortunately, he hits that Hypnosis, so Mega Lele goes to sleep. So. Over here, he could easily just switch into Charizard, so that's why I want to switch in my Landers, as I'm pretty sure he does not want to go for freeze dry my Glalie and risk uh, me waking it up and him wasting Veil turns. He wants to probably utilize Veil as much as possible, because it just makes sense. You don't want to waste your Veil turns. So that's why I bring in Landers T, even though it's risky, because he could have just fired off a of freeze dry right there. Uh, but luckily, I get the Charizard on the switch, intimidate it, so he could be scared of Stonehenge right there, or predict him to uh, Mega Evolve and I go for an Earthquake. Even though he does have Veil, he does not want to take it because it does still do massive damage. Or maybe if, even if my Landers T has Toxic, uh, that could be just like stopping his Charizard sweep. As uh, I just go for the U-turn on his Landers and go into Ferrothorn because I'm pretty sure he does not want to stay in and plus that's my best play to go for on against the Charizard since my Landers doesn't have really anything. Um, so now I get a free spike up as he goes into Heatran right there. And uh, Heatran probably just wants to throw off a Magma Storm, and getting up my hazards is very, very nice because it pretty much forces him to defog, and it's just going to whittle down his Regenerator Mon, which is Tangaro. And that might put it closer to where Keldeo can potentially break through at like plus one Secret Sword. I wish I was fighting him, that could be really, really nice with Keldeo breaking through Tangaro. But Water Z makes sense as well, since it does massive damage like Nagirna, I guess, with Hydro Pump. And uh, hits more Mons, I guess. Uh, but yeah, in comes Tangrowth. I can't switch out because of Magma Storm trapping me, so I just have to go for a Seeker Sword. No point in going for Taunt since Tangrowth doesn't really run anything else unless it's not going to be a Soul Vest, which I'm guessing it is going to be. Um, unless it's going to be Rock Helmet Sleep Powder, but I doubt it. As I can just switch into Ferrothorn on Tangrowth. I know it's not hitting Power Fire. He can knock me off. Uh, over here, I actually expect him to switch out into like Charizard or something, or even Landris. So that's why I wanted to go into my Landris and try and hit and power ice it. I actually forgot I don't have Hidden Power Ice on my Landers, though, so you'll see later on I tried to Hidden Power Ice something. Uh, as I went for Hidden Power Ice on Tangrowth, expecting it to want to go into Landris, but it was super effective, so I was like, yeah, this is probably Hidden Power Ice, but I just forgot it was Hidden Power Fire. As, uh, unfortunately, I take that Hidden Power Ice from Tangrowth, and I was like, dang, okay, I'm just going to go for the U-turn now. I just weakened my Landris for nothing, as it could have been really, really nice for a Charizard, Flare Blitz, or even Landris, uh, so that's really, really bad, as I would say those are misplays right there. But now I bring in Zero Aura, as uh, Weak and Tangrowth should not be able to take a Fire Punch from that range. And he just brings in his Landris, nice Intimidate off, as I go for the Fire Punch. So, uh, unfortunately, I do get a crit right there, um, even though it didn't really, really matter too much, since, uh, judging on that damage, he's not going to be bulky Landris, I would say. 
Um, and Hidden Power Ice, if I do catch him on the switch, would be really, really nice and just knock him out cleanly. Because uh, I just need some chip on the laners. And I know he's not left as well, so he has really no way of regaining health. As uh, now I bring in my laners as he pulls a nice switch into Tangrowth. I'm just going to go for the U-turn, get an unfortunate crit there. So pretty much Tangrowth is back at square one with its HP. And has to regen all that back as he just goes for a knockoff. And I guess nice Iron Barb's chip on that as well. So Tangrowth is just at a slither of getting knocked out. More than maybe Keldeo can uh, put in some work. Because that Tangrowth is just the only thing hindering my Keldeo. As over here, I switch out my Ferrothorn into Landris. Expecting Heatran to want to come out. Um, since I know he does not want to stay in and potentially lose his Tangrowth. Since it was so low to the point where Ferrothorn maybe just knock it out with like a Gyro Ball or a knockoff. Or even Iron Barb's damage. So yeah. Um, over here... I pretty much like can easily earthquake him, but I wanted to get stealth rocks up since it really, really uh, helps me a lot with the Charizard, the lander switching in and out. Uh, but he does have the defog on the lander, so now I'm like, all right, this has to be choice card uh, because you don't have just a normal lander with no scarf for defog, and it makes sense with the Charizard because you don't want to get rid of those rocks for the Charizard. So I went for the hidden power right there, thinking I had hidden power ice to knock out the landers, but nope. Had Hidden Power Fires. I was like, dang it, man. <laughs> so I just messed up. But at least uh, he's locked into the defog, and I can just go for an, more uh, Stealth Rocks again. So he brings in Tangrowth, gets some more Regenerator for him, which is a smart play. But then he brings in Landris again, as uh, he does get chipped away by that Stealth Rocks. He probably wants to go for a defog, but now he gets a U turn on out. As keeping my momentum would be crucial, as I could potentially get my Rocks uh, to stay. As now I go into Extra over here, and now I'm just praying that he over predicts, goes for Hidden Power Ice. As I go into Landris, or maybe he wants to defog as I can knock out his Landris. Or if he goes for Earthquake, then I can just go for a free U-turn, bringing my Landris back out. Even though it is risky, uh, risking my Scarf extra because it could be really nice uh, for the top cook on the back. I felt like he might not want to go for Earthquake, as he just goes from Tangrowth. So that leads me to believe two things. He might not be max speed uh, Landris, and also um, he probably just doesn't want to risk it as well. Because I could just switch into Landris on Earthquake. But yeah. Uh, in comes Feetran as I just go into my Zero Aura. Predictor will want to go into Heatran uh, because Ferrothorn pretty much doesn't really do much against Heatran as, you know, his Tangrowth is out. So, Zero Aura is in, Zero Aura is now, and I am ready to claim a life as I go for the close combat. And he does not have a good switch in at all since the Landers was weakened to the point where a Fire Punch might be able to knock it out. And uh, everything just is in range of Zero Aura getting, you know, a kill. So, he makes some nice plays right here. Trying to uh, maybe ex make some predictions as, like, you know, he goes for a fire punch, predicting me to go into Tangrowth. But no, I'm just going to st stay true to my guns and just, like, go and attack what's in front of me. As uh, I don't want to over predict, because if I over predicted right there and went for the fire punch, expecting Tangrowth to want to come out, which would be a nice play because he does get regenerator and he can live a close combat and he weakens me more with Life Orb, I'd rather just probably attack what's in front of me because I don't want to misplay. And plus, I'd rather just switch out as well, like into Keldee or something. So, yeah. Uh, he brings in Top Coco. I just want to switch out since I don't have really any move to hit Top Coco. Well, I bring in Ferrothorn as he actually pulls a double into um, Nine Tails right there, which was pretty interesting. I didn't expect that. I was really thinking about going to Exegru right there, which would have been really nice because I would have gotten a nice Iron Head off on the Nine Tails. Uh, but maybe he expected me to go into Ferrothorn. So, good plan on his part. As now, I just go for a power up and knock out the Nine Tails right there. So, um, yeah, Rorville is up. He probably wants to go for a defog now with his Landorus, which is to be expected, as he can bring in the Charizard. And he does just do that. And I just go for the Power Whip, hoping to knock out Landorus with the Veil still up. And uh, hopefully maybe Hail will help that as well, because getting out Landorus will mean a huge door open for my Exodrill. Um, and maybe if he Mega Vols Charizard as well. Uh, but luckily, he lives that with like a slither of HP, so he keeps his landers for later. As now I just fire for Thunder Wave, just an off chance he wants to go into Charizard. I can catch that, but he makes a nice play going into Top Coco right there. So I was like, dang it, okay. Uh, might as well just try and get a spike up over here, because I'm pretty sure Top Coco can't really touch me. Like I said, Shiny Top Coco is timid. He shouldn't have Inner Power Fire. They usually just have Inner Power Ice. Makes more sense. As uh, he throws off the Electrum Z. So he was the same Top Coco from last time when we battled. I don't remember it at all, uh, since it was like maybe two weeks apart or one week apart when we battled and uh, yeah I just got to spike up as I easy, easily uh, live that Electric MZ right there to be expected from a Fairy Thorn. So now I'm going to switch out in my Exodrill as Exodrill can easily take anything Top Coco wants to go for. He just tries to full switch but that does not work and uh, I just fire off a Toxic as Toxic looks to be my best play. Toxic Tangrowth want to come in but he brings in Charizard and getting a Toxic off on this putting it on a Tama 
means pretty much that I probably won't get swept by Charizard, even though I gotta wait until Toxic racks up. So I might have to sack a Pokemon here and there. <coughs> and, um, I'm probably, uh, have to pick what Pokemon I want to sack and what's gonna be, you know, the most expendable. Uh, and what I need to win the game. So going to Landris as I expect him to want to go for a Dragon Dance, you know, get that plus speed, intimidate him, lower his attack, and now we go to Ferrothorn as a sack since it's low and uh, it doesn't really do much for the rest of his team since pretty much it gets out, you know, knocked out by everything on his team. And also I can potentially get some nice Iron Barbs damage, uh, weakening the Charizard even more. He takes Rocky Helm with that Flare Blitz, not too much so since I was really low, and he takes some nice Poison damage as well. And Aurora Veil wears off, which doesn't matter. Uh, unless maybe my Mega Glalie wakes up from the sleep it's in, the nice slumber, and I can go for an Ice Shard. Uh, but yeah, I just go to Landers, get another Intimidate off, and now I go to Keldeo since I should be able to live a Flare Blitz. Buddy makes a nice play, going for the Dragon Claw. Uh, I don't know if that would have knocked down my Landers, but either way, he got the nice play right there. Uh, maybe expecting me to switch into Keldeo, expecting him to want to go for Flare Blitz. So. Bringing my Landers again, get another Intimidate off, and I do want to keep my Landers because I think I still get knocked out by Flare Blitz, funny enough. So I just go to my Mega Glalie as a sack since Mega Glalie, uh, I don't know when it's going to wake up, so might as well just sack it because it doesn't really take a hit either way from his last Mons that he has. So Charizard goes down, phew, got rid of that Mon as he brings in Landers, and I bring in my Landers. So over here, uh, he could go for an Earthquake, expect me to want to go to Extra Drill, or... He expects me to stay in and go for Hidden Ice, so I'm going to make the play going to Extra Drill, hoping he doesn't go for the Earthquake, and uh, luckily he does not go for that. He just goes for Hidden Ice, trying to catch my Landers T, as I'm pretty sure he's Scarf and he thinks he can outspeed me. So now I'm pretty sure he's locked in Hidden Power Ice. I could easily just go for, I do believe, a Toxic right here as I put the Tangerth on a timer. Uh, also catches, I guess, Landers if, Landers if he wants to stay in and knock it out, and I guess Tapu Koko. But I wasn't really scared of Tapu Koko. Um, so yeah, getting Tangrowth on the timer. You know, maybe I could have two-shotted him with Iron Head. I doubt it though, since Tangrowth has amazing defense. Um, I just go into Zero Ore over here, just an off chance. Uh, he wants to, you know, go for a Giga Drain. Zero Ore is going to be my sack, but he brings in Landers. Uh, so very, very nice that I outspeed him over here, and it turns out he's adamant. Landers feet, Choice Scarf. That's what he told me. So if he was Jolly, he would have been able to outspeed me. But since he was adamant, it all makes sense now, because he switched out my Exodrill, um, and the play just made sense. Um, since, you know, he probably would have just Earthquake Max Drill um, earlier on in the game. Since uh, I'm pretty sure Extra Drill Choice Scarf is slower than Lane of C Choice Scarf. Yeah, unless I'm getting my speed tiers mixed up. <laughs> but yeah, anyways, I go to Extra Drill on the top of Goku. And I should be able to take anything Top Goku wants to go for. And I just spam Iron Head. Um, if he switches into Tangrowth, he's not going to appreciate an Iron Head and plus toxic damage. And Top Goku is just going to get demolished by Extra Drill's Iron Heads. Uh, so yeah, in comes the Tangrowth, go for some Iron Heads, and I should be able to win the game with U-Turn Tang, uh, Landers T, uh, does nice chip, and uh, Fire Punch there, or which does a lot of damage as well. So he knocks me out to Giga Drain, gets some HP back, as uh, Toxic, you know, whittles him down right there, going to my Zero Aura, and I'm gonna go for that Fire Punch, as Fire Punch does not knock out Tangrowth, which is to be expected, and he knocks me out with the Giga Drain right there. So now, last mod Landers T versus Tangrowth, and luckily I didn't lose my Landers T that other land is Hidden Power Ice, as he lives on a Slither uh, with that toxic damage. And then I just go for that U-turn. Actually, I think I go for Hidden Power Fire, because, I don't know, I just wanted to do, go for that and knock him out. Since I'm pretty sure it would knock him out uh, from that range of HP. So, yeah, that's a GG to Demzer. So, yeah, really, really close game. And uh, this is a really cool team made by Hyper Clarence, so shout out to him. I think I got it from Poke Game, uh, this video. So... Yeah, uh, that was going to be it. Hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, and do your thing. Really close games today. And I guess common question of the day is, what do you think is an underrated Mega Pokemon that you want to see used? Mega Glalie's in the RU tier, but I really do think it's good in OU. Like, I drafted it in a draft league before, and it was doing so much work. It's insane. You know, it has that ground coverage, like a Mammoth Swine, and then Ice Stab. Oof, it's good. And that speed tier is really nice. And it has spikes. I love spikes. Love my hazards. So, yeah, that's going to be it. Uh, peace, peace, everybody.